Hello. Today, let's talk about the new creation. You are familiar, I suspect, with the idea that a particular historical person or place or event in the Old Testament can be seen as a type or shadow of its fulfillment in the New Testament. For example, the shepherd boy and king, David, in the Old Testament can be seen as a type or shadow of the Good Shepherd and the Heavenly King of Kings, Jesus Christ, in the New Testament. Or, for example, um, the waters of the flood at the time of Noah can be seen as a type or shadow of the waters of Holy Baptism in the New Testament. Or, the Passover meal of the Old Testament can be seen as a type or shadow of the Lord's Supper in the New Testament. You get the idea. So today, we're going to talk about God's work of creation in the Old Testament as a type or shadow of Christ's work of new creation in the New Testament. In the beginning, Genesis 1, the earth was without form and was void. Darkness was over the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God separated the darkness from the light, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The sequence is odd for us, but it's memorable, worth noting. There was evening, there was morning, the first day. God created and continued to create in subsequent days until on the sixth day, God created humanity in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female created he them. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Then on the seventh day, God rested from all of his labors. It was a Sabbath rest. Have you ever thought of God's work of creation in the Old Testament as a type or a shadow of God's work of new creation, of redemption in the New Testament? Let's see what happens when the Word of God that spoke all creation into being, when that word becomes flesh and dwells among us, full of grace and truth, and we have beheld his glory, glory, as of the only Son of the Father. When the one who said, let there be light, becomes the light of the world, and we see him and know him. Let's start with Monday, Thursday of Holy Week, when Jesus sends Peter and John ahead of him to make ready the meal of the Passover. As evening falls, this is the beginning of the day of preparation. We would call this Thursday evening, but to the Jew, it is the beginning of Friday, the day of preparation. Jesus celebrates the Last Supper with his disciples. He teaches them the truth of his divine body and blood in the earthly elements of bread and wine by virtue of the word of God, the word of Christ making that reality. He teaches extensively in the supper, but when the supper is ended, they leave for the upper room in the Garden of Gethsemane. There Jesus prays that the cup of all of humanity's sin may pass from him, and that the penalty of all of God's wrath may not be laid upon him. But he prays also not his will, but the Father's will be done. Judas comes and betrays the Lord. The guard of the Sanhedrin take him, seize him for interrogation. Peter follows and denies him. The Lord is mocked and beaten, bludgeoned with a stick, spat upon. This goes on for hours until dawn is breaking and he's taken before Pilate. Pilate finds no guilt, no fault in this man. He sends him to Herod, who is displeased because he wants to see a miracle. Pardon me. Jesus is sent back to Pilate, who is trying to find a way to release him. He determines that he will have Jesus scourged. The Roman flagellum is a torture instrument. It is a whip with... Um, Many long strips of leather studded at intervals with metal or bone. 
it is it is created to tear flesh to tear chunks of flesh off the back sides abdomen legs of the victim the flagellum may result in death it's designed to inflict pain it may kill or it may almost kill when Jesus has finished his lashes he's taken back to Pilate who displays him to the crowd and says isn't this enough I can release one man they cry give us Barabbas crucify him Pilate washes his hands of this and gives the nod for crucifixion Jesus is made to carry his cross until he can carry it no longer he's taken to Golgotha there he is crucified it's only nine o'clock in the morning Jesus is completing his work of new creation he has taken upon himself the sins of the world he is receiving the punishment for all humanity he is writhing in agony both spiritually and physically he is pressing himself up on the cross pressing his his feet the nail through his feet pulling with his hands with the nails through his hands pulling himself up to grasp and gasp a breath and then as his energy and life ebb he falls down again but realizes quickly that he needs breath and rises up and so he rides the cross up and down for hours until three o'clock in the afternoon Jesus commends his spirit to his father the work of atonement is finished the Son of God the Son of Man is dead Joseph of Arimathea asks for the body of Christ he and Nicodemus take the body down and begin the preparation that must take two or three hours at a minimum but they will rush because they must have him in the tomb before the end of the day of preparation the beginning of the day of Sabbath what do they do to prepare the body they must wash the body completely they must anoint the body with oil they will begin to wrap the body with fine linen the arms will be wrapped very loosely and in each fold of the linen there will be placed nard and aloes frankincense and myrrh copious amounts in all of the folds both arms both legs and then then a napkin will be rolled placed under the chin and tied at the head his face must be covered because he's been beaten and bludgeoned and it's disfigured a disfigured face must be covered his hands are tied his feet are tied and he's laid on a shroud Othonia is the name of the shroud his feet are placed at one end his head toward the middle it's about three and a half feet wide 14 feet long then the rest of the shroud is brought over the head passes over the torso back down to the feet it too is filled with copious amounts of, of spices and ointments there are um, bandages brought around the shroud and tied at intervals what make uh, a burial cocoon of sorts for the body of Christ he's then hastily carried into a tomb into which no one has ever been placed the tomb is sealed all things have taken place before the Sabbath begins now it is Friday night to us but for the Jew Sabbath has just begun after the completion of his creation the creation work that God did he rested on the seventh day after the completion of the new creation work that the Lord Jesus did he rested in the tomb
During the Sabbath day, the disciples hid for terror in the upper room, the doors and windows being locked. The, uh, the women waited in order to anoint the corpse when the Sabbath was completed. The Sanhedrin fretted and sent soldiers to guard the tomb. And the Bible says that all creation waited as a woman in childbirth to be set free from the slavery of corruption and delivered into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Finally, Shabbat, the Sabbath, was ended. What would be to us Saturday night is to the Jew the first day of the week. Or as Jesus called it, on the third day he will rise again. Jesus visits the souls in prison from the time of Noah. The earth turns and the new day is dawning. Here's how John puts it in his gospel, the 20th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. And so she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. She came while it was still dark, but darkness is turning into light and all the world is beginning a new creation. Humanity is reconciled to God and the great foes of humanity, sin, death, and the devil have been vanquished. For all of those who believe in Jesus Christ, these enemies have become toothless tigers. They can only roar, but they have no power to destroy. Jesus is alive. He has passed through the walls of the tomb. He is no longer wearing his grave wrappings. He is wearing a robe of resurrection. He, the new Adam, is the firstborn from the dead. Mary delivers her message to Peter and John, who run to the tomb. We're told that they see the linen wrappings, quote, lying there, end quote. That is one word in English, it's two words, lying there, but in Greek it's simply the word keimena, lying there. It's spoken of um, an infant who would be wrapped and placed in a crib, and we would say, ah, the baby's lying there. Or it could be spoken even of a village that is nicely situated in a meadow. We would say, it's just lying there. Now, at this point, we're told that the wrappings from the body of Jesus were lying there. One would have had to have cut the cocoon-like wrappings or disheveled their folds terribly to get the body of Jesus out. But the body was gone. And the the wrappings were still in their folds. They were still in their right place. They were just lying there. It was a clear testimony. They were a witness to the resurrection of Jesus. Strangely enough, though, you remember this sudarion, is what it's called, the napkin that goes under the chin and ties at the top of the head. Well, it should have been in the midst of those folds, but it's not. Instead, you remember the Jews require a second witness. The sudarion is the second witness, for it is wrapped up in a place apart by itself, making a separate testimony to the reality of the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus meets with Mary and the women. He meets with Simon, Peter, and the disciples. It is the first day of the new creation. On that new day, everything, everywhere is changed. When God first created, it was a mighty work, but it was only a shadow of what was to come. For this new creation, this resurrection day, restored the broken fellowship, indeed, restored the intimacy between God and his beloved children who had strayed so far and sinned so greatly. His beloved son, the life-giving second Adam, 
had established a new creation and in it a new relationship that by grace through faith the children are restored to the bosom of the Father. And there was evening and there was morning, a new day. And God saw everything that he had done. And God said, it is good. Amen.